Hi there, I'm Christopher Harrison. I'm a senior program manager uh, here at Microsoft inside of Microsoft Cloud and AI. I think I can introduce myself correctly. Uh, but anyway, I'm here today to talk about one of my favorite new features, uh, so new in fact that it's still in preview, called Azure Static Web Apps. And of course, this begs a question, what is Azure Static Web Apps? Well, sort of like the slide implies here, uh, Azure Static Web Apps is about taking your, your, your core code and deploying this out in minutes. So let's talk about what that core code is and let's talk about what a static web app is. So a static web app uh, or could also be a uh, what's sometimes known as a full stack web app, is an app where the bulk of the logic, potentially even the bulk of the code, is all going to be client-side code. And that the server is really simply various services so that I need to look up a piece of information. My code is going to run on the client that says, hey, I need this, makes the call out to the server, gets it back. And then it's the client that's then going to figure out, OK, well, what are we supposed to do with that? And when the user then goes in and acts upon that, the client will then go ahead and figure out what it is that's supposed to be done send that back to the server. The server, of course, is still going to validate, should always do server-side validation. And then once it's valid, it will then go ahead and maybe write that out to a database or do whatever else it is. But the bulk of the logic exists on the client. And these are apps that are frequently written in Angular or React or Svelte or, or Vue. These are all frameworks that are extremely popular and chances are ones that you've already used. Now, when you're creating this type of an application, the, the requirements for hosting, the requirements for the server are very different than a traditional application. That when we think about a traditional application that's maybe written in, uh, say, Django or uh, a full Express app that's uh, doing server-side rendering of HTML and sending all of that down, you know, in, in that type of a situation, I need a traditional web server. I need something that is going to have a lot of power and I'm potentially going to want control over it and, and things like that. But when we're talking about a full stack web app, I don't need that level of, of, of control that I don't want to think about setting up a web server. I don't want to think about how am I, how am I going to scale this. I, I don't want to make any of those decisions. I want to be a developer. I want to write code. I don't want to think about VMs or containers or any of that. I just want to write code and then just push it out to the cloud and then let the cloud deal with it. After all, that's that's the whole promise of, of the cloud, right? I'm going to really quick see if I can make it less laggy, as some people say, um, by uh, trying to share the whole screen, not the application. Let's see if that works. All right, let's see. Maybe this is better. Um, let's see. So that's exactly yeah, what we've better. got here is that power with Azure Static Web Apps. So what this will do is it will give us the ability to build and to host our static web apps. So I can create my web app using whatever framework, whatever JavaScript framework it is that I might want. And I can host this inside of Azure. I'm also going to have built in authentication and authorization. Ask any web developer about having to do auth. And they all have some level of, of, of horror story. They all have something that's you know gotten them near to tears because it's just been so frustrating. Well, fortunately, what you'll notice with Azure Static Web Apps is authentication, authorization is built right in. So you'll be able to more easily add this in to your applications. Now, we mentioned the fact that we are going to need some level of server-side code. And the way that we're going to handle this is by using Azure Functions. So what is Azure Functions? Azure Functions is Azure's serverless component. 
So what we're going to be able to do is we're going to be able to create these little functions, basically these little, little services, these little pieces of, of code, sometimes called microservices. We're going to create those in JavaScript. We're going to make them part of our project, and then we're going to push them up. Those will be then hosted inside of Azure Functions using a serverless architecture. And what's great about this serverless architecture is the fact that I'm not going to have to think about scaling. I'm not going to have to think about sizing VMs or any of that. That serverless takes care of this for me. It will automatically scale up and scale down for me without me having to configure it, think about it, or otherwise. So thus far, here's the couple of key takeaways that I want you to get is that we're going to be able to build and host our static web apps using the frameworks that we like, Angular, Svelte, whatever it is. We're going to be able to get an easier authentication and authorization implementation. We're going to get serverless code by using Azure Functions, which we'll be able to write using JavaScript. So again, a language that, that we already know. And you're also going to notice in a format that's very similar to um, to how we uh, have coded uh, different things in the past. So if you've ever done like Express or Restify, you're going to notice that this will feel relatively natural uh, to you. And then finally, last but not least, is the fact that this is going to be built into GitHub through GitHub Actions. So something I'm already doing, something that I really want, something that should be relatively natural for me to transition into, and something that I'm already doing. So Azure Static Web Apps is designed to meet you where you're at, that you don't need to go out and learn a whole bunch of new stuff to start using this. And what's also worth highlighting, and we're not going to have time, unfortunately, here to get into like database components and things like that, but you're also going to notice that inside of Azure, that you've got Postgres, you've got um, uh, you've got SQL Server, you've got MySQL, you've got uh, Cosmos, which will give you uh, MongoDB style APIs. So when it comes time to uh, get data access, you'll be able to do this all inside of Azure as well. And it's also worth highlighting the fact that we've got uh, cognitive services and AI that we could go ahead and access as part of all of this. So there's a lot of, of uh, different tools and so forth that we're going to be able to take advantage of. And again, using uh, skills that we already have. Now let's get back into this, this GitHub, uh, just because I want to highlight what the flow is going to be. And then we're going to get in and actually see the demo. And this is where I'm going to spend the bulk of my time. Because if you're anything like me, and I know I am, I, I need to see it in order for it to make sense. So this is going to be the workflow. What we're going to do is we're going to set up a GitHub repository. Now, that GitHub repository is going to contain whatever code it is that we need for the client side. So that will be our HTMS, uh, HTML, our CSS, and our JavaScript. It's also going to contain all of the code that will be running our Azure function, so all of that, uh, that, that JavaScript code. We're then going to uh, push into that, that main branch that we'll have pointed to, or we will PR into that. And what will happen at this point is a GitHub action will execute. And if you're not familiar with GitHub Actions, GitHub Actions allow you to, to do something in response to something happening inside of your GitHub repository. So an action will execute. And what that action will do is it will then take my code and it will push it out to Azure. So it'll put our static content in one place. It'll put all of our Azure Functions into Azure Functions and make that available through this mystical, magical thing called static web apps. OK, I promised a demo. Let's, let's start doing a demo. And this is going to really be the rest of what we're going to get into. So let's, let's see how this works, shall we? 
So what I've got right here is I've got um, uh, an empty copy of uh, Visual Studio Code, and this is where I'm going to be doing uh, all of my all of my work. Now, this is an empty folder, so nothing up my sleeves except for my arms. I do have a couple of extensions already installed. I'll highlight them as I go along, and we'll also make sure that uh, you'll have access to uh, the URLs where you could go ahead and grab them as well. So let's uh, start off by creating an HTML page. Now, I'm not going to use any framework except for Bootstrap here. Um, again, you can use React or Angular or Vue or whatever it is that, that, that you like, um, but I'm not going to here. And the reason that I'm not going to is because I don't, want, um, I don't want any confusion that if you're not familiar with React, I don't want that to get in the way of you seeing how, uh, how this all works. So I'm going to stick with Bootstrap, uh, which uh, most people are familiar with. And if you're not, the only thing that you're going to notice is just that there'll be a bunch of HTML that's suddenly going to appear on the page. But the vast majority of it isn't going to matter. There's just going to be a couple little classes that we'll want to be familiar with. But otherwise, the rest isn't going to matter. So I'm going to use uh, in a, a snippets extension uh, that, uh, that I already have, uh, Bootstrap. Um, um, Let's see, uh, it's this one right here, um, Bootstrap 4, Font Awesome 4, Font Awesome 5, Free, and Pro Snippets. So there is, uh, there's the name of the, uh, of the extension that I'm using. Um, not the best name necessarily, but it's, it's, it's amazingly powerful because I'll be able to say B4, and it will give me that little dash dollar sign, and I'll hit Enter, and poof, it will give me all of uh, this uh, fantastic HTML that will be all set and ready to go for me. So this is now everything that I need for a um, uh, for a Bootstrap site. Okay. Now I'm just gonna uh, sneak into the body here and I'm gonna create um, an unordered list and this is going to become my placeholder uh, for all of the uh, dogs that we're going to display that I'm gonna make this about cute dog names or cute dogs because we need more cute dogs. That's, that's just all there is to it. So that's what I'm gonna put in uh, right there. I, I am gonna put this into a container real quick though. Um, so I'm gonna say div um, class equals uh, container. And the only reason that I'm using Bootstrap um, is just to uh, make my life a little bit easier and that way I'll have a better uh, display uh, that's not gonna require me writing a whole bunch of CSS That'll, that some people will complain about Bootstrap because it uses jQuery or whatever. Um, it's it's a great framework. If, if what I'm looking for is a, a quick and easy way for me to stylize a website, Bootstrap fits the bill. I love Bootstrap. Okay, so there is our basic little page. And then I'm going to sneak down here. Whoops. And I'm going to um, add in a uh, script tag. Um, and I'm going to say uh, local index.js. And that'll be our, our little script tag. So I'm gonna uh, create that JavaScript file in just a second. Now you are gonna notice that I'm calling this local-index. And the reason that I'm doing that is because what we're gonna notice here is we're gonna wind up with another index.js file. And just to keep things a little bit simpler, I'm just gonna leave this as local index.js. Just, you'll see why in, in a little bit. Okay, so I'm gonna say local index.js. And what I want this to do is I want this to display out a uh, list of dogs. So I'm gonna say uh, const dogs equals, and we'll set up an array, and then uh, we'll go ahead and say name, and I'm gonna say uh, Roscoe, um, who was our, uh, our adorable lab mix, um, who sadly uh, crossed the Rainbow Bridge uh, about a year ago. Um, and then we've got Sammy, who's our, our adorable uh, little AM staff mix. And then let's go ahead and just um, throw in um, a couple of other uh, names uh, as well. There we go. Okay, cool. 
So there is our, our array of, uh, of dogs. Now I'm gonna go ahead and create a, a main function here. And you might be wondering, why are you doing it that way? Why aren't you just coding in the, the, the code here? Um, why are you putting everything inside of a main function? And I'm doing this because I know where it is that I'm going with the demo, that eventually I'm gonna need async await and a couple of other little things. And so I'm just preparing for that. This is just gonna make for less refactoring later on. So just sort of roll with this um, at, uh, at the moment. Okay. So I'm gonna uh, create another little function here that I'm gonna call display dogs, and I'm gonna say function uh, display dogs, and uh, this is going to say for, uh, we'll say dog, uh, oops, uh, let dog of dogs, and uh, this is then going to call another little hel helper function here, display dog, um, dog, and actually I'm gonna, call this something better. Let's say um, add dog to UI. There we go. And then let's go ahead and say function add dog to UI. We'll take in the dog and then I'm gonna say const um, dog UI um, um, equals document dot create an element, an anchor, and then I'm gonna say dog uh, UI, and this is just gonna be for the bootstrap uh, display, is I just need to set my class name here to be a list uh, group um, item, which reminds me I need to update my HTML in a couple of minutes, which I'll do. That's not a problem. Um, dog uh, UI dot uh, inner text. This is now going to be the uh, name of the dog, so dog.name. And then uh, we're going to uh, document uh, get element by ID, our dogs list, and then we'll say add uh, or append child, and then the dog UI. Okay, so let's talk about what we've got here. Uh, so what I've got is this is going to be executed. It's going to call display dogs. Display dogs is then going to loop through all of our dogs. On each one, it's going to create a new anchor. It's going to set up a class name here. It's going to set the inner text, and then it's going to append the child. Now, again, yes, this could be done with far fewer lines of code if I was using um, a framework like Angular or React, and that's fine. Um, Again, I just want to stick to core JavaScript here. So that's why I'm doing it uh, this way. So this will then display all of my, uh, all of my dogs. Let me make sure um, that I've got this updated. So I said dogs list and class equals, and then I'm going to say uh, list group. Okay, let me just double check all of my code here. Yep, that all looks good. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So now I'm gonna use the second little extension. Uh, and that second little extension is a little thing known as uh, Live Server. So Live Server is a fantastic um, uh, local server, web server for development. And what's great about this is the fact that uh, whenever this launches, uh, it will uh, set the page up to automatically refresh. So it becomes a great developer tool. So uh, I've already installed it. And then to launch it, uh, you'll either have an icon down here, which I don't at the moment, uh, but I will when I hit Control Shift P, which will bring up that little bar there or Command Shift P. And then I can go ahead and say open with light server. It then tells me that it started on port 5500. You can see that right there. And so now if I um, open up my uh, browser here, I'm just going to switch over to that. There we go. And hit enter. There is the list of all of my items. And so now we can see Roscoe and Sammy and Pookie and Artichokes. Apparently I put in plural. That's all right. Okay, so there is our, uh, there's our, our, our little setup. So now that I've done this locally and I've decided, okay, this is all good, now I'm ready to bring this to the world. 
And so the way that we can bring this to the world is we can push this first to GitHub. So here's my GitHub page. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a brand new repository. And this is something that chances are we would have been doing anyway, that if you're working on a team, you're probably gonna be using GitHub. And so now uh, you'll be able to do this right here. So I'm gonna call this, uh, let's say ASWA um, hack demo. So what I'm gonna call it. I believe that is public. Um, you could actually mark it as private, that's fine. Um, I'm gonna leave it as public here and then I'm going to click on uh, create repository. Okay, and then it's gonna tell me, hey, how, uh, it's gonna tell me how to push everything up and then I'm just gonna copy that, that bottom part there. So all that I did is I just created a repository for my code inside of GitHub. Okay, back to Visual Studio Code here. Let's, let's push this out to GitHub. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to um, say git init to start my, uh, my local repository, git add dot to add in everything, git commit, initial commit, and then, uh, and then I'm gonna paste in uh, what I've got. So this is now set up everything locally, and then I'm just gonna paste what I copied. So this adds the remote, it sets the main branch, and it then goes ahead and sets my uh, push for me. And voila, that's now all going to get pushed out. Cool. And so now if I go back over here to GitHub and I hit refresh, I've pushed this all out to, to GitHub. So up until this moment, I really haven't done anything revolutionary. And that's sort of the point. You might be wondering, well, what are we gonna get to something new? Here's where. So now I wanna make my, my fantastic website available to everybody. So I'm gonna click on home here and I'm gonna click create a resource. And I'm gonna do a search for static web apps. So there it is. And I'm gonna click that ad right there. And then I'm gonna click create. And so now what you're gonna notice is it's gonna ask me a few questions. It's gonna ask me for the subscription. Now, if you are a student, uh, you can get uh, $100 in free Azure credit from Azure for Students. You can go check out aka.ms slash A4S. And that will give you access to, um, uh, to, to, to those credits. But what's worth calling out here is the fact that Azure Static Web Apps currently in preview at the time of this recording is free. Again, it's free in preview mode. That will of course change in the future. But what I do wanna highlight is the fact that with Azure Static Web Apps, the uh, one of the main components of this is using Azure Functions. And what's great about Azure Functions is that it's actually very cheap. In fact, you get a lot of compute for free on Azure Functions. So even when this does become a paid for service, you are going to notice that this will still be a very cost effective model here. Then it's going to ask me for a resource group. Resource group, sort of as the name implies, is a name of uh, resources. So I'm going to call this ASWA Hack Demo. Um, I like creating a uh, resource group for everything that's going to make up whatever hack project uh, it is that I'm working on, because it makes for easier cleanup later. So that if you're using some expensive services or, or otherwise, just makes it much easier for cleanup. So create one resource group and then just keep using that for your hack or whatever your project is that, uh, that you happen to be working on. It's then gonna ask me for a name. I'm just gonna keep using the same name because I'm very creative. Um, uh, ASWA hack uh, demo, there we go. It's then gonna ask me for a region. Now, right now, it's a very small subset of regions that you're gonna notice, uh, but um, uh, all that you're gonna need to do is just choose one that's relatively close to you. What I do wanna highlight though, is that the region beyond just 
being close to you is really not going to make a difference unless you're using additional Azure resources. If you're using multiple Azure resources, make sure that all of them are created in the same region, that if you cross region boundaries, that is going to give you a performance hit. So just make sure that they're all inside the same region. Okay, right now you'll notice the only SKU is free. I'm gonna hit sign in with GitHub, and this is just going to um, open up a, another little page for me. Um, I just have a little thing that I need to do back there. There we go. And then now, if I scroll down, it's going to go, okay, well, what org do you want to use inside of GitHub? And so in my case, that's going to be the core GitHub or Git Trainer page. It's going to ask me what repository I want to use. And I've got a ton of repositories. So I'm going to uh, use the cool search feature. I'm going to say ASWA, um, hack uh, demo. There we go. And then it's going to ask what branch. And I only have one, so I'll just choose that one. Now, what this is doing is it's going, all right, well, where should I go find your code? So now I've told it where to go find my code. Then what it's going to do is it's going to go, hey, can you tell me a little bit more about what I should do with those, uh, with those folders? So um, it's going to give me a handful of different presets. So if I'm using Angular or if I'm using Vue, I could go ahead and choose one of, uh, one of those there. Now, in my case, I'm not using any of them, so I'm going to choose custom. And what's nice about using custom is it will also allow me to focus in on each one of these three items. So first up is the app location. And this is going to be the root of our application. This is what our clients or our users are going to see. Typically, that's going to be forward slash. The next is going to be the API location. So like it says here, traditionally, that's going to be in a folder called API. Could be inside of whatever, but traditionally, it's going to be API. So I'm just going to leave that with the default. And then the last thing that it's going to ask is it's going to go, hey, where is all of your HTML, CSS, and JavaScript? Now, the reason that this spot right here exists is because if I'm using, say, Webpack, or I'm using TypeScript, or something like that, that's going to generate and emit my, uh, my JavaScript, then that might be in a different folder uh, than everything else. So if I need to go in and say, hey, this is where I need to go look for the, the end resources, I can do that right here. So in my case, I'm going to go with forward slash, I'm going to go with API, and then just empty in here. All of that works just fine. And then I'm going to click review and create. And then I'm going to click create. All right. Now, what is this doing? What this is doing is it's setting up a little space to host at my web app. It's setting up a little space for my Azure uh, functions. and if I come back over here to GitHub and I hit refresh, it's also setting up this new little YAML file. And if I look at this YAML file, this is now my GitHub action. Now, don't worry about exactly what's going on in here because you're typically not going to need to worry about going in and modifying this. But at a high level, what this is doing is it's looking for either a push to master or a pull request to it. And if it gets that, then what it's going to do is it's going to go grab all of the appropriate items and push that out to Azure for me. So this is what's going to make the magic happen of getting my code from GitHub out to Azure. If I Go back over here now to Azure, and I click on Go to Resource. What we're going to notice is that it gives me a little bit of high-level info. It shows me that workflow file that we just opened, and then it also shows me the URL. Now, you're going to notice that this is not ASWA hack demo. That instead, this is Jolly Beach. I mean, I suppose we wouldn't want a sad beach, so we've got a Jolly Beach. So we've got Jolly Beach. And then some hex value after that. And you might be thinking, well, wait a minute, Christopher. That's not really 
the best name here. I'm not, I'm not keen on that name. Okay, don't worry, not a problem. If you click on custom domains, what you're gonna notice is that you can register a custom domain for this, and it gives you the little bit of information that you're gonna need to set this up. So if you don't like that name, then that's fine, you can still go ahead and use a custom domain with this. Okay, so now I'm gonna click on my URL here, and this is now what's been deployed out into, uh, in, in, into Azure. You'll notice up on the URL here that this is now Jolly Beach, yada, 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 and that there are all of my items. Cool. So just like that, I've now taken my website, deployed it out to Azure, or pushed it out to Azure, which then automatically pushed it out to Azure Static Web Apps for me. Pretty cool. Now, one of the things that we've been highlighting is the fact that we also get server-side code as well. So let's add some server-side code. Now, I'm going to be a good developer. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to say uh, git checkout b. Actually, hold on, let me do this. Um, clear, there we go. And I'm going to say git branch checkout b, and I'm going to say functions. There we go. So now you'll notice git branch checkout tick B functions. And this is now going to, if I, oh, hold on. Um, let's try and type this correctly. Git checkout tick B functions. There we go. Okay. So now what this is going to do is this is going to create a brand new branch. And this is something you should get yourself into the habit of, that anytime you're going to be adding any big new components should always be in a new branch. And so that's what I'm doing right here. And so now what I'm gonna do is I'm going to click over here on Explorer and I'm gonna create a new folder that I'm gonna call API because that's where my APIs are going to live. And remember that the, um, uh, remember that we're gonna be using Azure Functions for our server-side code. Now, there's a little bit of setup work that needs to be done for Azure Functions. Fortunately, I've got an extension for this. That right here, you're gonna notice that I've got a little button here that says Azure, and if I click on uh, extensions here, and I just do a search for Azure Functions, you're gonna notice that there it is, and I've already installed it, so I can start using it, um, and, and away we can go from there. So I'm gonna click on Azure right here, and I'm gonna click on new project, and this is gonna be a new Azure Functions project. So I'll click on that, and then I'm gonna click Browse, and then I'm gonna go to API, and then I'm gonna hit OK. So everything's gonna go into that API folder. I'm gonna say, hey, I want them in JavaScript, and I'm gonna say, I want um, an HTTP trigger. Now, what an HTTP trigger is going to do is it's going to um, make this callable. So it'll behave really just like a REST endpoint. So I'm gonna call this dogs, since that's what it's gonna serve up, and I'm gonna hit enter. It's gonna ask me for an authorization level, and I'm just gonna choose anonymous, just leave it like that. And then this will set it all up. So let's go back to my folder structure here. And now we can see all of these new files that have been created. Now there's a couple that I wanna highlight here. You are gonna notice that this does use Node. So it's got a package JSON here. So if there was any server side resources that you needed, you can add them in just like normal packages right here. It's got a little host JSON file which has a little bit of information on how it's going to be hosting uh, my, uh, my functions and setting all of that up. And then it's also got this little local settings.json 
which is designed to store any keys or any other important values that I don't want checked in to source code. But let's get into the code here. So our code, you'll notice that we've got a dogs folder. There's index.js. This is our code. Now, it's got some boilerplate in here. Let's break this down real quick. The first thing is our context object. Our context object gives us access to everything that's going on with our function. So anything that was sent up, how we want to send information back down, how things are running, et cetera. In fact, you can notice right here that this is being used to print out a little message here. So JavaScript HTTP um, uh, function triggered a request. So I'm just going to update this. Um, sent list of docs. Then you're also going to notice that we've got a request parameter here. And the request parameter is going to contain anything that the user might have sent up. So maybe they sent in something on the query string, or maybe they sent in something in the body. Now, in my case, there's nothing really that I need there. So I'm just going to delete all of that middle part out, because I don't need it. And instead, I'm going to say const uh, dogs equals and I'm gonna create a real quick array. And the first one that I'm gonna create here is I'm gonna say name and I'll say um, Azure. And then that way we can, we can know for certain that this came from Azure. So let me just um, uh, do this and we'll do this. There we go. Cool. And so now uh, there is our, uh, there's our list of, uh, of, of dogs that we're gonna send down. And then what you're going to notice right down here is our context, as promised, gives us access to how we're going to send anything down. So what I want to do is I want to send down our list of dogs. So I'm going to create a new uh, JSON object with a property called dogs that's going to store that list of dogs. By the way, one little shortcut thing that you can do is if you do that, it does it as an automatic parameter. Um, I'm going to skip that just for clarity's sake. but if I was writing this for myself, that's honestly the way that I would do it. I also need to set up a header, um, and this is going to uh, be uh, content type and application uh, JSON. There we go. Okay, so now there is everything. So there's my my list of dogs. There's my uh, there's my response, and now that is is ready to go. Now, I want to start testing this uh, locally. So the, the first thing that I'm going to need to do is I'm going to need to actually start this function. So I'm going to um, change directories into API. And then because I've already got the uh, toolkit installed, which you can get from, from the extension or you can download directly, and again, links will be provided, I'm able to say func server start. Um, and I just, I, I love, uh, whoops, uh, func um, host start. There we go. Funk host start. And I just love being able uh, to, to say uh, funk at the, uh, at the command line. Um, I don't know why. That just gives me, uh, uh, that, that just always makes me smile. So that's the command that I executed. And so now this is running locally. And it's running right there on, um, on that URL. So if I click on that, and go back to, uh, to my browser here, you're going to notice that there is that JSON object. There's now our, our list of dogs. So I want to start calling them. So what I'm going to do boop -ba -doo, is I'm going to update my code to start calling that from the server. So instead of using our local array, I'm just going to empty that out. I'm now going to create a new function here, update this to be async, then I'm gonna call load dogs. Now you might've been wondering originally why I created a function and this is why. And the reason for it is because I'm going to be using async await. And if you're not familiar already with async await, what this allows you to do is it allows you to uh, call code and have it be asynchronous while the, the code itself sort of looks synchronous. Um, it's, it's kind of a neat little trick. Um, it's a, a fantastic way uh, to be able to, uh, to program.
Now, the catch with it is you can only use um, a wait inside of a function that's marked as uh, async. Uh, otherwise, it, uh, it doesn't work. Um, and unfortunately, you're not able to just right here say await uh, load dogs. Uh, that doesn't work unfortunately, in JavaScript. And so that's why I sort of to do this little bit of a tap dance um, is just put it inside of a function, and then it works. Whatever. OK. So now let's go ahead and make the call. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to say const uh, response equals await um, fetch. And I'm going to go um, API uh, dogs. And then I'm going to say const uh, JSON equals await uh, response.json. If you're not already familiar with fetch, uh, fetch um, will happen. Uh, but with, uh, with fetch, uh, what you're going to be able to do is uh, you're going to be able to make a call out to a uh, make a call out to a server, and then it will give you a response back. And uh, if you want to then grab the JSON from it, which is what I want to do, you then grab that. And both of those calls do require an await. Uh, they are designed to be asynchronous. So now I can go grab uh, the uh, the the dogs and add them all in. So I'm going to say um, for uh, let uh, dog of uh, Jason dot dogs. I need to go that one additional step. If you remember, there's the body. So this is the Jason. So and and in fact, we saw this in our browser. You'll notice that core property up at the very top called dogs. That's why I need to go step down one more level. I'm gonna go step down. Go grab that, and then I'm going to append each one. So I'm gonna say dogs. Um, uh, whoops. Um, uh, push. That's the word I'm looking for. Uh, and then push each one in. OK, so now I'm going to save this. Cool. So now I've updated my code, and now my code will read all of this from, from functions. Now, to test this locally, there's going to be one last little step that I need to run through, unfortunately. Um, I do need to stop the server here, which I'm going to do that right now. And I am going to uh, need to go into my VS Code folder and go into my settings folder and add in one last little setting. And here's what I need to do is I need to tell my live server, hey, if somebody asks for something off of um, API, we're not going to do that locally. But instead, we're going to go to our Azure function instance. Um, and the reason that I need to do this is because Live Server is hosting my HTML and JavaScript, but it's not hosting my Azure function. That's being hosted on a separate process. So this just allows me to have the two sing together. This is just needed for local development. Again, I'll provide a link to a doc where you can um, read through all of this in action. Um, and so forth, but you'll be able to see how it works right here. I do not need this on production. Let me repeat that. I do not need this on production. I just need this so it'll work locally. So let me hit save. And now you'll notice down here I see go live. I'll be able to click that to restart it. So now that I've stopped it, I'm going to restart it so it will reread that, uh, that file. And now if I go back to my browser, let me go back to my uh, local host and just do a real quick refresh. And there is Azure, Sammy, and Roscoe. So there are our now new values. Pretty slick. All right. So now let me, I'm going to open up a new command window here. Let me add everything in and then deploy it out. So I'm going to say git status. That'll show me my local index was updated, um, uh, VS Code, which sort of matters, um, and then my API. So all of those look good. I'm going to say git add everything, git commit message, added functions, and then git push origin functions. Voila. And so now, all of that will be pushed out. OK, real quick sip of water.
back to it. Okay, so now let's head on over to, um, uh oh, it just dawned on me, I didn't have the uh, my code window up. Let me just bring that up real quick. Here we go, sorry about that. So yeah, so what I did, uh, open up a new window, uh, git status, I'll just show it all off. There's my git status, um, there is my git add, there is my git commit, it added in all the items, and then there is my uh, there's my git push. I apologize for not having that on the screen. I had the wrong window up. Okay, there we go. All right. So now, now we're ready to go. Now we're ready uh, to, uh, um, to to push all that out. So let me go ahead and head back over to uh, to my browser. And now what I'm going to do is what I would normally do at this point. So I'm going to go back over here to uh, to GitHub, and I'm going to um, uh, click on pull requests. And so what you'll notice is it sees right here, hey, functions had recent pushes one minute ago, compare and pull request. So I'm going to click on this, and then I'm going to click on uh, create pull request. So I'm doing exactly what I would normally do. But something's going to be different here. What you're going to notice is this little part right here pops up. And you might be wondering, well, what's going on there? Well, what's going on is this is now executing my action. Let's, let's, let's go over here to our actions again. So here's my actions, and we can see the, the, the history uh, that, that it's running here. Let me actually go bring up the, uh, the code for it. So I'm just going to go back to code and GitHub workflows, and let's open back up the YAML file. So here it is. And again, don't memorize this. Here's what I want to highlight. On either a push to master or a pull request to it, it's now going to execute everything below. And what is everything below doing? Well, what it's doing is it's packaging up my code and it's going to send it out to my Azure Static Web Apps. So if I open this, this, um, uh, this PR back up, that's what this is now trying to do. It's, it's currently in progress. It's still doing its thing at the moment. It's now pushing all of my code out to, um, out to Azure. Now, you may be thinking, well, wait a minute, Christopher. I was just making a PR. That master branch that I had, that's the one that I really want to be live. Is this now overwriting everything that was live? And the answer is, fortunately, no. Watch this. I'm going to go back over here to my Azure portal. And what you're going to notice right here is I've got this little spot that says environments. And when I click on environments, down below, you're going to notice that it now created this brand new one down here. You'll notice the time here at 4.03, my time, and it's different from that 3.45. So this is the original. This is now a brand new environment that it's created for me. And so now I can do testing right here. So I could go do my user acceptance testing and make sure that everything looks good. If I click on browse, you'll notice it'll open up a new tab. I now see Azure, Sammy, and Roscoe. And I now see right up here, there is that URL with my dash one at the end. So that is that new environment that it created for me. This is specifically designed for me to be able to go in and do any testing. So once I look at this or have my users look at it and I go, okay, this all looks good. And now we're ready to go live. I go back to GitHub. I click merge pull request. I click confirm merge. And then now this has been properly merged. Now, if I go over here to actions, what we're going to see here is that there's now a new action that's being executed here. And what this action is now going to do is it's going to go grab all of my code 
that's now in master and push that back up into Azure function. So effectively, it's now doing that swap for me. It's now taking everything that I had inside of that, that, um, that staging, pushing that out to production, or really in GitHub terms, it's just completing the, the pull request there on my, um, um, on my Azure static web app. So it's gonna take all of that and do that for me. It's also as part of this going to delete that other staging environment because it's now no longer valid. So I just wanna highlight for right now, this is the original one. You're gonna notice no dash one there. There's my, my, my Sammy Pukki uh, artichoke. I'm gonna hit refresh here and it's gonna just take it a minute uh, to, to complete the, uh, the operation and to push all of this out. And so you will always need to just be patient with this. Just remember that this is always going to take it two to three minutes. Um, I always like to say it's gonna take just long enough to make you nervous. It's gonna take just long enough to make you think that it's not, uh, that it's not working. And then voila, it will, uh, it'll then work. So I've, I've now stalled long enough. I now see a green check here. Let's go back. Again, I wanna highlight right up top here, you're gonna notice there's no dash one. So this is our original. We can still see the original values. I'll hit enter, uh, oops, give it a second, there we go. And now there's all of my values. And if I go back over here and I hit refresh, now you're gonna notice that staging environment is gone. And then now I'm left with that, that master. So let's, let's, let's talk about what, what it is that, that we did here. What we did is we created a website and we set this up using Bootstrap, a tool that we're already familiar with. And we added in a little bit of uh, dynamic code using JavaScript. Again, something that we're already familiar with. We then went ahead and we created a repository in GitHub, something we're already familiar with, and we pushed our code up to it. Then what we did is we went into Azure and we said, hey, we want a website. And our code is inside of that repository. So it went, oh, okay, well, let me go ahead and set up an action for you so that way I can automatically get the code. And it then did that and voila, our code was pushed out. Cool. Then what we said was, well, now we want some server side code. So what we did was we added in an Azure function. We added that into the exact same project. We created a new branch. We pushed that new branch up into, um, into GitHub. Sorry about that. We pushed that branch up into GitHub and then we did a PR. And then what we saw was Azure Static Web Apps then created a new environment so that way we could go ahead and do testing there. And then when we decided, hey, we're ready to go live, we then went ahead and we did a, uh, a merge of that PR and it then went ahead and took our updated code, pushed that out and then cleaned up that staging environment. And that is Azure Static Web Apps. So the main takeaways that I want you to get is the fact that we were able to use tools that we're already familiar with, and it fit right into the pipeline, right into the workflow that we're already using. So with that, I'm gonna close this out and I'm gonna highlight the fact that uh, we will have links uh, so that way you can go get more resources, you can um, go get your Azure for Students credit, uh, and 